This is Grady County in America's Deep South. Situated on the Georgia-Florida border, this quiet place is known as the motocross capital of the world, and Transworld Sport travelled here recently to catch up with a true dirt bike hero. At just 22, Ryan Dungey has already won every title that there is to win in the sport. In 2010, he became only the second rider to win both the AMA Supercross and Outdoor National Series titles in his rookie 450 class season. Two years on and Ryan's making history all over again with the Red Bull KTM team as he continues to establish himself as one of the true legends of motocross. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ryan Dungey. We're here in Tallahassee, Florida, and this is my house. Come check it out. Um, uh, first off, I'll bring you over here to, uh, got a dirt bike in the house. It's kind of weird, but it's pretty cool. We got a, this is my first 2009 championship bike. Uh, run the, won the Supercross title and the outdoor title, and then was able to uh, continue on to the motocross of nations that year and uh, win that as well. So um, I asked if I could have the bike and they let me have her, so I, uh, I was like, all right, man, it's gonna have a, something to look back on, cool memorabilia, look in all the moments and memories and stuff like that, so that was fun. This right here is my 2010 450 Motocross Championship Trophy. Uh, that was a great year, we were able to win 10 out of the 12 races and uh, walk away with the championship, and uh, a lot of effort that year, a lot of hard work being my rookie year in the class, and um, you know we worked really hard on the bike and team and everything like that, So. Um, it was cool to be able to walk away with that one, especially in my very first season. This guy's the, the kind of the, the Mac Daddy of them all. They, uh, I guess it's uh, just every what every kid dreams about as a as a kid growing up to, to win the uh, 450 Supercross Championship, and was able to um, accomplish that in 2010, and and hope to accomplish many more. But uh, very very cool to have, and very cool to look back at, and all the memories we had, and. Uh, Long road, but uh, all worth it. Hailing from Minnesota, Ryan made the move south in 2008. His mum and younger brother Blake still live in the Midwest, but travel with Ryan to his races, and they're regular visitors to his home in Tallahassee. You know, it's pretty mellow here in Tallahassee, not loaded much, just kind of, uh, real laid back area and a lot of fun. So this is where we do our, our work and, and uh, put in the time and spend most of my days here. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Ryan first rode a dirt bike at the age of five and he turned professional at 16. He comes from a motocross family. Dad, Troy, who lives with him in Tallahassee is his coach and practice mechanic. I used to race back in the day. Then we had three boys, and uh, they were the first two were five and six maybe, and I wanted to get them into it, you know, because I always had a passion for it. So I, want, I got back into it, I bought me a bike, and I bought them two little 50s, and that's how it all got started, and Blake came along, and then it was a family thing. We'd go every weekend, and leave Friday night, go ride on Saturday, race on Sunday, come home, go to work Monday, and it's just that's how it all got started, and uh, just progressed, and then we started getting better, and started going to nationals. And that's how we all, that's here we are today, you know? We didn't do too much except for this racing. So we bought a used motorhome, like a 24, um, like a little tiny thing. And we would leave on Friday, pack the motorhome up and take the boys and uh, go to the local races, which were probably like an hour and a half to two hours away. And we would camp and then on Saturday we would race. We'd leave Friday, Saturday they would race, Sunday they would race and we'd come back, unload, you know, start the whole process over again. And, it really was more of a, a hobby and something fun to do. With Ryan and his brothers tearing up the tracks of Minnesota every weekend, the family finances were often stretched. Without the support of sponsors for a long time, it appeared that Ryan's talent would go unnoticed. Definitely tough times. You know, there was the ups and the downs. You gotta take with the good with the bad, but uh, 
as I, uh, I got that my first, my very first um, amateur career win when I was 15. And um, they, things just kind of seemed to take off from there. You know, once I kind of figured out, I knew what I wanted to be since I was a little kid, but it was kind of hard to, kind of hard to see it, and, you know, with, uh, with the support of everybody and how fun, much fun we had. You know, I think that's what helped keep things going too, is just, it wasn't so serious. At times it probably, sh I should have been more serious, but it was, uh, it was a fun, enjoyable, and, and you know, we, we just all enjoyed going there racing, and um, pretty soon we started winning, and things just kind of took off from there. Spotted by five-time world champion and the then Makita Suzuki team boss, Roger DaCosta, Ryan was offered the chance to turn pro. He became a teammate of Ricky Carmichael, the man regarded as the greatest motocross racer of all time. Coming into the pro scene, I was very fortunate right off the bat. You know, I got to work with some of the best guys, like Roger DeCosta, who's my team manager. Uh, Ricky Carmichael at the time, he was my teammate. You know, he was just, he was at the very top of the sport. He was driven, he was motivated. And as a kid, um, that's, that's exactly the footsteps I wanted to follow, some a champion like that. And so to be able to go right into the pros, and <laughs> as a kid, I've always liked Ricky Carmichael. He's the guy I uh, always uh, looked up to. And uh, to be able to be that guy's teammate and to be able to talk to him was kind of, kind of surreal at first. Kind of, kind of pinched me, you know, like tell me if this is real. But you know, I've settled things and uh, you know, find our, found our position in uh, in the pro ranks and just was able to keep and progress from there. Ryan does the majority of his training at the Carmichael Farm, and it's where he keeps his bikes. When Ricky Carmichael retired from motocross to move into NASCAR, it was Ryan who became the Suzuki team's number one rider. But after securing his historic double championship win in 2010, team boss and longtime mentor Roger DaCosta left Suzuki to join KTM. Ahead of the 2012 season, Ryan made the same switch, leaving behind the Japanese giants to join the Austrian manufacturers, who had never won a race in the American elite class. It was a gamble, but I think Ryan knew in the back of his mind that Roger has been around, he knows his stuff, he made the Hondas look good, he made the Suzukis look good, you know what I'm saying? He had the good riders, so I think it was all, all good, man, they're good people. However difficult the decision, it's one that Ryan hasn't regretted. He delivered the team's first ever Supercross race victory in Phoenix before adding wins in Atlanta and Las Vegas. A broken collarbone put paid to his chances of landing the 2012 Supercross crown, but during the outdoor season he was simply unstoppable. Eight successive race wins saw him wrap up his second National Motocross Series title, and the first ever for KTM stateside. Winning, it's, it's what we work for, it's what we race for, and uh, it's what we uh, get paid to do and what t teams w work so hard for, you know, I mean, I see, you know, firsthand the, the hours that go into to putting a bike together and making, or just to see how KTM has committed over here in the United States. And I mean, they've, uh, guys over there is 24 seven building this bike to get it ready. And I mean, it's everything in the one that we all celebrate it together. You know, it's not me that, that like, oh, we, I did it, I did it. You know, it's, it's everybody because we win as a team and we lose as a team. Following his second outdoor national title in the 450 class, many now firmly believe that Ryan has the ability to dominate the sport for many years to come. It's amazing what he's accomplished and I think he's the best. I think he's only going to get, you know, I think he's only going to get better from here. I don't think he realizes how good he is. And uh, I just, I feel like there's, there's another, another level that he's going to reach that's just going to take the sport up that one more notch. The physical demands of top-level motocross are often underestimated, and with a punishing race schedule that stretches across the United States, hours of work go in off the track to maintain a rider's peak physical condition. We do a lot of running, cycling, swimming. We do a lot of weights in the gym, you know, more endurance stuff, and then obviously riding the dirt bike, you know. So there, there's so many 
factors that come into play to getting stronger and, and the fact that it takes years to, to build up to uh, having a solid foundation to be able to go out there in the outdoors when you got two 35 minute motos and you gotta lay it down every single lap because here in America the competition's tough. In a relatively short career, Ryan Dungey has already achieved so much in his sport. Still only 22, this young American looks on course to become one of the greatest motocross riders ever. I just want to keep being the best I can be as far as uh, an athlete, a person, everything like that. You know, I'd really love to to keep um, going after more and accomplishing more in the sport of motocross. Uh, I really feel like I have a lot of uh, good years ahead of me and to, to be able to be strong and, and uh, successful, so I hope to con continue that. There's, uh, there's a lot I, you know, I want to accomplish myself, but you know, I, there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I can do and, and, and give back and help as well, so I just uh, want to be all I can be every single day of my life and, and I hope that takes us good places.